What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Backliners Podcast. It's Agro and Barracuda. As per usual... Uh, Mic check? It's it's actually working, somehow. Really? Um, nice. And that might be the only right. thing that goes right uh, on today's episode um, of the <laughs> podcast. I, you'll hear it in my voice, particularly... Uh, well, I was going to say as it goes on, but I can feel it already. Uh, I am sick. Um, just hey, a little, like... Again. Yes. Dude, that'd be kind of awesome, in a way. Like... Would you would you go through puberty again, assuming that you would like get you'd hit another growth spurt, mm-hmm. your voice would get deeper, uh, you'd have some kind of awakening, uh, oh. <laughs> you know? Uh, what else happens in oh. puberty? I think that's those are the big three, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Nothing? really just the awakening that I'm looking for. <clears throat> well, I mean, um, I wait. How long does puberty last? Doesn't puberty last like thirteen years or something? It's a like, long time. Yeah, it's a long time. Guys aren't out of puberty to like twenty five, right, or something like that. Uh, We're not done. Like maybe that's our yeah, brain. I th- yeah, your brain doesn't doesn't fully develop uh, until you're twenty five. Um, but I assume that it isn't just you know. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in puberty. Uh, this is going to be a weird podcast episode. Um, yep. I'm just letting you run. Wherever <coughs> well, you want to a... run to, I'm right there with you. That's a mistake. I apologize in advance for all the <laughs> throat clearing and all that kind of stuff that I'm going to be doing during uh, during this episode. Um, speaking yeah, of... So today's episode... Oh. Oh. What do you have? Oh, are you going? I'll let you go. I thought you were dead, so I'm... No, I'm alive for the time being, oh, okay. but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Scream says his brain fully developed at 16, and... Uh, Really? That's. I'm just gonna read the message and then move on. I'm not gonna have any comments on it. I'm not going he's to. He's still like 13. <laughs> yeah, he's still waiting to get there. Um, <laughs> speaking of this episode, it is brought to you by our brand new sponsor, Oakley. Uh, we are super excited. Apparent Barry, uh, we did get a heads yes. up that our Oakley stuff is on the way, uh, and they Let's are go. very kind nice. and very apologetic that uh, it hadn't gotten to us quite yet. And normally, um, I wouldn't mind, and I don't mind, but in this particular mm-hmm. instance, I'm so excited to get my new Oakley sunglasses that I've been, like, legitimately checking the mail every day. It's like I'm uh, a kid waiting for, I don't know, Christmas. like a Christmas or, like, a report card yeah. that I have to hide. Um, yeah. Not that I, those came in the mail or that I did that. Like, I feel like that doesn't work, right? You're, with a certain, As long as your parents are, are a certain amount of plugged in... To like when you would be getting, or if you have siblings, like. I mean, also, like, how are you even going to hide that or even change the grade? Because right. I mean, if you wide out it, like, what are you gonna like, like, pin it over and just kind of write like the letter that? It's that just would, not. I feel like work. that would look so obvious. So maybe you have to go to Microsoft Word, copy mm. the whole thing. Mm. But then I feel like if you're doing that much work, you are probably, you know, a smart kid anyway. And if, you're, so you well, and if your parents have a brand new pair of Oakleys, they're going to be able to see right through it with their pristine exactly. vision, uh, courtesy of those Oakleys. So you're host. Uh, but your parents are looking really good in that scenario, mm-hmm. which you got to respect. Uh, when you wear Oakley, there really is more than meets the eye. Don't trust me. Try it for yourself. I've worn a lot of sunglass brands in my life. And I can assure you, Oakley is not only the best looking, but the best quality out there. So head on over to Oakley.com for more information today. Big shout out to them. Um, all right. It was uh, playoffs <clears throat> time mm-hmm. this this past weekend. Or whatever that term is called. Yeah. Path of Masters colon playoffs mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. is the thing. So pretty... It was a very fun event to watch. I Pretty thought. shocking for me. I yeah, think. a lot. Let's just say that neither of let's us were say, in danger of having a perfect bracket. Yeah, uh, we were actually very far from having a perfect bracket. Um, Some would say couldn't I, be farther. Yeah. Uh, so right out of the gate, Ferryman just looked so bad. Like <laughs> real bad. Real bad. That was. The uh, worst I think I've seen them play in a very long time. Not, again, I do think the Glads did play well that set. And I do think that was probably the only set they played well this yep. weekend. Um, yep. But Ferryman just looked so incomplete and so bad. I think that was Paul's probably worst set in a tournament probably ever. Probably and ever. I think... Uh, I. Th- I feel like Baskin had a really good event the entire time. Yeah, I thought he looked uh, But great. I think 
uh, Ferryman's mid jungle looked especially bad. Uh, and I yes. thought Sina was gonna do a bit more this tournament because I feel like he just kind of like shows up tournament time. But I feel like the only game they won in this set, if I remember correctly, was the E set game, or maybe that was further in the tournament. Um, uh, that could be right. Unfortunately, the stats aren't working on the Pro League website, which is actually uh, an assault on me uh, personally, mm -hmm. um, because of how much I depend on those. But yeah, it uh, it was not a good weekend for Sino. Um, yeah, kind of the entire time. I think he was probably one of the weakest players in the entire tournament. I mean, again, I don't want to like continue harping on him, but. I genuinely don't think he had a good performance i feel like sino would also kind of agree that he just didn't have a good performance yeah uh, this whole weekend certainly not uh the performance that that he wanted to have i'm sure um mm -hmm. individually that of course for the team as well um glads did look pretty good in that set i watched some of it back uh when i got yeah, an I opportunity and it was a pretty impressive performance uh you know i think the ferryman certainly did play poorly um I don't think the Glads would tell you that they beat the Ferryman playing at the Ferryman's best. Um, but you can only play who's put in front of you. Um, yeah, exactly. And overall, I thought the Glads really capitalized well. Kirmi in particular uh, continues to impress. Um, and for me, this is something that we haven't really talked about. Uh, we, you know, we've touched on his previous performances and all that kind of stuff, but... Going into this tournament, I think it was probably worth talking about how this was a, it, it will continue to be, because it isn't back to regular season play yet, where the Glads go has been mm -hmm. how what Kirmi is doing. You know, he's certainly been their driving force in when they're winning games. Uh, Kirmi, over the last, let's say, fall split of last year into spring split of this year, has looked like a jungler who uh, is easily in the top half of the league mm -hmm. um, in regular season play. That being said, at Worlds, he had a really rough uh, tournament. And uh, in the SPL qualifiers, uh, he looked like the worst player on this team, um, which is hard to remember uh, considering how well he's playing right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that Watching how Kirmi does in these big moments, um, in these bigger, you know, playoff tournaments with more money on the line, with more on the line, if he can play at the level that he's played at over this last few, you know, weeks of the regular season and how he played this last weekend, um, he's going to either carry the Glads to nearly single-handedly at times to a better mm -hmm. position or he's going to get picked up by a team that has uh, world's winning potential. Like he, I, th I really think that he has been playing that well, but that's still a pretty big question mark. Because I'm not talking about like some, you know, oh, he didn't play great. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, he sprinted it in at Worlds and at the SPL qualifiers. Like he was, he was the Usain Bolt of of mm -hmm. inting. Uh, in those games. And I'm sure that, that he would say the same. And I, and I love Kirmi, great guy, uh, great player. Um, but yeah, I played in houses with him yesterday and they were a lot of fun. Was he going uh, off? I'm sure he was. Yeah, he was, he was cooking actually. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Kirmi believer, uh, specifically for regular season. For sure. I want to be a Kirmi believer when it comes to postseason. Um, yeah, I'm still on the page of he's relatively new. In mm -hmm. my eyes, for some reason, I don't. Has he been in the league for two years now? Uh, yeah, it was Valks last year, and then this year. This is his second year. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, well, I mean, Valks struggled basically all year, and I think also they had all the, a little bit of outside team issues or outside uh, performance issues uh, in their team. So I've heard so. I think this might be his kind of like redo year, I think. And I do think as we got closer to playoffs, I think Kirmi continued to look better and better. And then I think, honestly, I think him and Baskin were kind of my um, two players for this entire event. 
Uh, I think Kiermi and Baskin both carried a lot of weight on their team. And also, both of them continued to look good even when the rest of the team was struggling, which is a very hard thing to do for any pro player. Like, well, especially team... for specifically those... The, the, it mm -hmm. is much easier to look good in mid or ADC when your team is struggling. Um, mm -hmm. It is much harder to look good as a frontliner when your team is struggling or as a diver. Um, so, and I, and I completely agree with you. And, and like, there have been a lot of instances of players in ADC or mid who uh, get a pass because, you know, they look the best on their bad team. And, uh, you know, we, uh, the, the people who, the pro players, the, you know, caster, like, it's like, yeah, you know, maybe he's, a lot better than his team, but also like maybe he's not a uh, type of situation. Mm -hmm. um, jungle in particular, I think is almost impossible to look good when your whole, when all of your lanes are losing and your team is really struggling. Uh, but mm -hmm. frontline, you know, solo and support certainly fit that bill as well. Yeah. He definitely, for this side, at least I think he just ruined Paul's game and mm -hmm. Paul and Sino's game basically every game. Yeah. Uh, next set was uh, Jade Hounds, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I was thinking about my buddy Agro uh, uh -huh. this entire set, and mm -hmm. uh, you know how he how he talked about you know a certain team just uh, if they didn't show up. I think it was you know maybe the, his last straw with that team. I don't remember you know the exact words, but uh, Dragons did not look good this set. No, they sure all. didn't. No, they and got they got smacked. Kind of the same thing with Fairy. I feel like both of these sets were just a uh, kind of a jungle gap of mm. uh, Oath playing well. That to put a put a little asterisk on that. I do think Oath for the rest of the tournament. I don't think he played great. Mm -hmm. um, but for this set, I do think Oath played well. And I think Agreed. Hounds kind of as an entirety played really well. Also, uh, just remembering it now. Um, I think Binicu also deserves to be in that conversation mm, of players mm -hmm. that, like, didn't make it to the end but still had a really good tournament. Um, I think Binicu just has been performing really well lately and then kind of tournament time. I think he cranked it up a lot. Yeah, I agree. Save for one uh, fat-fingered Ag Agni Dash against the Ferryman. Oh! Uh, which, oh. Uh, like, I'm not... I'm legitimately not... Uh, so sad. Like, that does happen. Um... Mm -hmm. And I legitimately do not think that it should be held again against how well he played uh, in this tournament. I, I definitely agree. Um, yeah, the the Dragons, I mean, we talked about this set a lot. This was, you had this set 3-1 for the Hounds, which was correct. Uh, I had 3-1 for the Dragons, which was uh, clearly incorrect. Um, they just did not look, th they just continue to look like they don't really uh, have the same, they aren't on the same wavelength. Uh, I think that they, their picks and bands look a little scattered. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about, you know, the PBM on the mage supports thing is like, God, that horse's corpse is like pounded into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't even like, it's like a, yeah, I I also feel like that is a bit troll. It's super and, overblown. Um, yeah, like, he's definitely good on the mage supports. And, the, like, when they're losing games, it's not because of the mage supports a lot of times. It's just no, they're just it's, looking poor as a, an entire team. Yeah, the... If you put Mike on a Guardian... I don't think it saves the majority of their 3v3 comps through mid. Um, mm -hmm. Their mid 3v3, I would have thought, would be a huge strong point going into the season for this team. And it has just not been uh, for them overall. Um, and I thought that's where they lost a lot of these games was through the control on the map of... Th through their mid 3v3 um the hounds 3v3 was, was just ending up significantly more successful uh if my memory serves me correctly uh ducky also continues to have a really good year um yeah surprisingly yeah um, i kind of feel like ducky before 
Um, was kind of, uh, I don't want to say like placeholder, but I kind of feel like he was just a Demi style player where he never really like shines mm -hmm. and like makes a lot of plays. But I feel like this year he's shining and making a lot of plays, which is really good to see. Yeah. Be very happy for Ducky. Uh, Ducky was one of those players, um, that fans were always much higher on than, uh, I was, uh, for a large portion of his career. Um, this is the first year where I feel like Ducky has really solidified his SPL position. Um, yeah. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt is one of the eight best solo laners in the world uh, mm -hmm. and would make, uh, would not be a significant downgrade from the best solo laner in the world. Uh, like, yeah, I, I, I think that he's playing really, really well and deserves a ton of credit. Because typically, like, for a guy who's had as many shots as Ducky has had, uh, you kind of know what you're getting the vast majority mm -hmm. of the time. Like, you don't really see resurgences this late in careers very often. Uh, really, if ever. The, like, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've got sick brain, so, like, I'm struggling to think, like, of a player who was who's been around as long as Ducky has, who was as average to below average as Ducky had been historically in his career, that has completely revitalized their game uh, to the level that he has. I'm not sure that there is another one that I can think of. Most of the time, it's the opposite. You know, they come in and are uh, are successful and then fall off really hard. Um, I don't know. I'll try and think yeah, about it a little more. I don't know. I completely agree with that. Uh, definitely need Ducky's having a really good year. Uh, Dude's a beast. Next, next I was King's Hounds, and I think uh, for me, this was just a battle of the junglers, and I think outside of game one, I think uh, that was when Harry was Serb, and I think they just kind of like, Harry just had that, uh, that Serb game that uh, doesn't really go his way. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I think Oath played a really good game one, and then I think Twig just kind of went diffy the rest of the games. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of these games in this entire tournament, in my opinion, were just dictated by the jungler, and I feel like uh, this entire set just Twig played really well. Yeah, I think Twig was due for one of these types of sets. The uh... also a lot of the talk was like about the right side of the map playing poorly like basically mm -hmm. harry and twig playing poorly mm -hmm. and i feel like i feel like harry had a pretty decent turn but i feel like twig had a really good tournament yeah michael jordan meme and i took that personally uh type of moment there for the kings mm -hmm. um i did get this one right you had hounds 3-2 uh in this matchup i had kings 3-1 uh though mine would have been over the dragons um but I'm taking the win anyways, because you can't stop me. Uh, <laughs> yep, there we go. Um, Give team, but still got it right. <laughs> exactly. We both had the Leviathans facing off against the Ferryman uh, and winning, and the Ferryman winning 3-1. Needless to say, that is not what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. But the Leviathans did get the 3-0. I really wish that I could see the stats for this set, because if I remember... God, dude, having Sick Brain is the worst. It's just like... Where is all of my? Th where are all of my thoughts going? Like, what are they doing? Where's all of my brain? Like, I'm I'm going into the file cabinet to like access the memory of Wait, watching what, this what set. What's that? You on? I'm on the smite bot right now. Did did the Leviathans like? This could be totally wrong, but something in my brain is telling me I watched a game where it looked like they didn't want to win. Uh, I'm being facetious here. They obviously wanted to win. But I felt like there was a game where, like, the Gladiators should have won because the Leviathans were, like, making a lot of mistakes, but then the Leviathans ended up winning it in the end anyways. Uh, Am I thinking of a different... Was I thinking of the Hounds-Kings game four? Where I felt like they could have ended, but then they didn't, and then the Kings ended up winning? Maybe. I don't remember this... Glad's Leviathan set much. Uh, I feel like Final had a really good performance. I think Adapting had a really good performance. Um, I think Ishel mid looked really bad like the entire tournament. Yeah, I'm lucky. Um, yeah, I just think she kind of just dies in mid. She doesn't have enough damage to like instantly combo people off of her. Mm -hmm. Just going to 
Going into the last game, I feel like Snoopy just did not do anything this last game. Yeah. yeah I, I do think Leviathan's had a really good tournament overall, though. Like, as a cohesive five, I feel like they looked really good. Yeah, I don't know why... I mean, why are there two uploads of this uh, of this set? I'm confused, uh, but it's fine. Um, also, the remake game one was funny. Oh yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. I'd be so tilted. That was uh, the, that was a tough one. Remakes tilt me so hard if I'm in the booth or like something just out of my control, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I mean, once you get back into the game, you're fine. But right. But once the admin comes in, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we have to remake. You're like, no shot. Because everyone, like, changes things, what they do. And if you were, like, hardcore winning your lane, they know how to play the lane now. So a lot of times, like, you either don't get that first blood or you get, like, reverse first blood or something. Right. Um, but yeah. Okay. No, I skimmed the VOD real quick. Uh, I was not thinking of this set for the Leviathans where I thought that they had some really bad moments um but i was thinking of the kings and hounds where the hounds they should have ended uh game four right if if now i gotta scroll through this vod in order to find out what if we just like watched a game uh <laughs> and just like did the vod that way uh game four and that like a whole podcast episode was just us like watching a game being like yep here's what's happening uh anyways okay yeah this is where uh benny uh yeah game four hounds should have won um and this one was not a fat finger i do believe uh to to go in a little bit there from benny instead of hitting the titan he like tried to kill oh Tings. yeah he tried to like three yeah i remember yeah he you huang three which I mean, come on! How are you? It you Goomba stomp like that's good, right? Yeah, I'm watching it now. I mean, coast. Oh yeah. Okay, it's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Uh, just watching the way they played this in, where coast kind of let himself get walled and then just died instantly, and I'm like, no way! Cause the Titan, the Titan was half. And Kos gets blinked on by Twig, and Twig's like one third or a little below half, actually. Mm -hmm. And then Kos just gets gone on by the Ymir and dies, and then they have like a crazy base defense. Yeah. I remember this. Oh, yeah, that was a tough so one. So sad. That was yeah, a tough I'm one. Pretty sure they should have gone to game five watching that. Yes. But Kos is able to stay alive. Also, my son needs to buy Oboe. Please. Uh huh. Please. That, like this game Please. where he's playing Hachiman, he's got Death Toll Upgrade, Devours, Xe, Chins, Dominance, Titans Bane. What what's he swapping out there for Oboe? Uh Xe. Mm. You got enough penetration. Buy Oboe. It's so good. It's so good. If their front line's ever together, it just zaps them. It does so much more damage than Xe. They so much more. Do be getting zapped. I do agree with Unless that. Unless you're just trying to like burn down one person. But a lot of times ADC it's better right now to have the AoE damage in my opinion for most fights. Also, it really helps with ending the game, which uh for a lot of games this whole tournament, teams could not really end. No, if teams you, if you can't end. Oboe is OP in the Titan room. It's so OP in the Titan room. Yes, that is absolutely true. Uh it was popping off for Yarkor. In the Titan room on this uh, mm -hmm. on this defense, yeah, this was uh, just a criminal a criminal attempt to end there by the Hounds. Okay, wait, no, chat did remind me. Yeah, there was a moment uh, in game two of the Leviathans and Glad set where Leviathans took like three two v five fights in a row. Oh um, yeah, that was that set, and that made me want to like. Uh, I don't know. Do something that I don't like to do. Like yeah, they just got they got fire giant. And then like walked out of base like it was a ranked game, and everyone like walked down different lanes, and then just like chain died for a while. I was so confused. It just so yeah, a team with so much veteran leadership like doing that just like instantly made me just so asleep at the wheel. <laughs> Forty three like, question marks like is yeah. is all I wanted to post. But they recovered. They won the game. You know, no harm, no foul, except to my mental. Um. <laughs> to everyone who's watching exactly uh okay then it was hounds versus ferryman uh the ferryman i thought with how 
the hounds looked and how the ferryman looked, I thought uh, this would be a hounds victory. Um, but then the ferryman decided that they actually felt like playing smite uh, the way they normally do. Um, and yeah, that's I feel it. Like, and they win 3 1. I feel like Paul and Baskin hard carried this set. And then I think also, if I remember correctly, Oath just did not have a great performance. I don't think Sino had a great performance this set, um, but I think Oath just was not doing much for this entire set. Yeah. I think his Thor gameplay, like, he missed a lot. Um, and this this really seemed like a very jungler-centric uh, meta. And it seemed... Oh, yeah, I think one game, Oath just, like, jumped in for first blood on Baka and then got first blooded. And yeah. then, like, two seconds later, Sino died as Thanatos against Baka. Um, it's almost like jungle is um, important and strong. Yeah. And I... Yeah, I kind of just feel like... I don't think this was, like, a mid-diff entirely, but I just feel like Paul had a really good performance. I don't think any duo lane really looked good like together this tournament mm -hmm. um just really felt like a jungler in uh mid meta also i've never seen so many horror assaults in a tournament just confuse me so much uh i think there were a lot of like support horses that were just like ulting around and then i think a few maybe solo horses were just ulting around i feel like Horus as a god did not have a good tournament. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know what people were sipping when they were playing that god, but it was such a weird tournament and just decision making. I feel like every time someone pressed four, you had no idea where they were gonna land. Yeah, the voices get loud when you're playing Horus. You know what I mean? Really like, does. They, they 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 just turn it up a notch. Uh, whenever it's Horus time, I agree with that. Um, and then okay, so th I did want to talk about this set. Jade Dragons up against the Gilded Gladiators. Uh, this was the one where I was like, okay, this this is the set you cannot afford to lose uh, mm -hmm. if you're the Dragons. I know that the Gladiators just beat the Styx Ferryman. Um, but I don't know. This set felt very important after like the, the wind had been taken out of this, the gladiator sails, I think from getting swept uh, and looking particularly looking very similar to how they looked during the regular season. Yeah. I completely agree. The dragons needed, needed to win this game or win this set. And they did. I would not say it was super convincing. Uh, I thought the gladiators played well in this set um but the dragons again didn't inspire me uh with a lot of their play overall like when when this set went 1-1 i was i really if you would have asked me who was gonna win right there i think i would have said glads um just based on how this year has gone for the dragons and um with how the gladiators were playing uh that's the way it felt like the momentum was rolling, in my opinion. Uh, but the Dragons were able to stabilize and get the the next two to win 3-1. What what were some of your takeaways for, uh, from the set? Uh, I just kind of felt like um, it was kind of gladiators of old. I feel like they had kind of one shining set. And then after that, I feel like they didn't really... I don't want to say like didn't get better from that set but it seemed like they had like one super saiyan set and then just reverted after that mm -hmm. um, so i feel like a lot of this set was just their team just in general not being as coordinated as the other team um just felt like a blanket statement of them just not being as cohesive and just looking worse yeah yeah i, I i'm I'm just like re watching at 2x speed, like this game three. And for I cannot explain my disdain for Kronos mid. Uh, I am like the world's biggest Kronos mid hater. Uh, but I thought for sure this game was over 
when Darda is like blinked in by fire, Insta died before his alt went off. Oh, uh, yeah. Just just the most baffling sequence. Um from not just him, but the entirety of the dragons, because they had like a free fire that the gladiators weren't gonna be able to defend, but then they take a fight instead of securing the objective I... and you okay, know, I remember done. now, this is one of the worst sets of all time. <laughs> I, I love how it went happened. from, like, I don't remember it, to, oh yes, this is the worst set of, and this I, is one of the worst sets of all time. That is hilarious. I, I watched every single game, or like every single set, and every single game, and sometimes, yeah, this set was literally, this looked like two, like, SEC teams fighting. It did. Of just, like... The fights didn't... It was like Warriors if they didn't win. Mm -hmm. Like, both teams were just fighting nonstop over nothing. And yeah, I, I think I blocked this set out. This this is one of the worst sets of all time. Easily. I hated <laughs> this set. That makes me want to watch it back this, all the more. I Dude, remember this Mifflin, game, this game three. Oh yeah, Miff was losing it. I remember that. Mifflin was unhinged this Yeah, set. I loved it. He I I feel like even the casters were starting to feel it as the set progressed. Yeah. Of just what is happening? What is going on? What like the Dardes play? Yeah. And then just it everything was just so confusing. I think this set also maybe PBM had some bad four assaults or something. Um and then Bobby Game 4 just, like, goes crazy int mode and just wants to die. Mm hmm I, this, I remember now. This was one of the worst sets. <laughs> this, yeah, this is tied with SSG United Season 6. For, like, wow. the worst set of all time. Wow. Well, maybe that's a good set, actually. Wow. Um, well, bad set for my mental. Uh, uh -huh. Bad set this all was also there This was also a bad set for my mental. Um, sure. I blocked this out of my memory. This was a terrible set. If you want to watch some like some of the weirdest smite you've ever seen, and you want to feel like you can be a pro player, watch this set. Oh yes, it, dude. Oh my god. Then yeah, I'm watching back game three again at two x speed, and the glads like pull a fire and then just walk away from it when it's like twenty five percent HP. They oh, just yeah. full. They're like, you know what? I don't want it. I don't want it. Yeah. And dragons want walk it. in. They're like, wait. Oh, it's ours. And then uh. they turn around, they're like, oh no, they pulled fire. Like, Yeah, and then Scary dies defending a tier 2 for no reason. Good lord, you are not kidding. I totally... No. I, I also wiped this set from my memory for, for a clear reason. I, I was getting unhinged on my stream, and the casters were completely unhinged on the mainstream. And it... The thing is, is that when that happens, you have to, they have to have earned it. Um, because if, if the, it isn't as bad as you are portraying it, you will get absolutely slammed, uh, by pro players and the community as a caster. Like if you're wrong and it's just like tilted you for whatever reason, you know, whatever, uh, Mifflin was right. Um, Boris in chat. <laughs> yeah. He said Mifflin lost his mind. It was fantastic. He pulled me down with him. Good. There should be more, uh, this is the, I don't want to get too off topic because we're already like at basically uh, episode length, especially for sick brain. But I was thinking about it recently and I think I just used to troll all the time when I was casting. Mm -hmm. And I think it's my fault that I, that me and everyone else on the casting team stopped trolling quite as much. Like I think that that was, I, I I know for a fact that that was like a, a thing that at one point I was like, all right, we got to stop trolling quite as much when I was maybe more guilty of it than anyone. Um, and I think they should start trolling again. So he, Gore, I think you should troll, uh, more, uh, just, just, just troll. Like, why not? You yeah. Know that's, what I mean? a, that's some spice, you know, get yeah. a little unhinged. Yeah. Get a little unhinged. That's, uh, that's what I have to say about it. Yeah, this set, um, a win for the Dragons and a loss for everyone's mental uh, is A about... loss for all the viewers. Yeah, exactly. Great reference there is in Steel and Chat uh, for I Think You Should Leave. Barra, I Think You Should Leave Season 3 came out last week. Did you watch? Oh, boy. No, I didn't. How how good was it? I bet it, was it was really so good. good. It was really Actually? good. 
Yeah, it was really good. I I, I, le- I legitimately can think of two sketches that I think that you would enjoy right off the top. Because you're a hater, right? So, like... I am. I am. I've got to find the right sketch for you. Uh, and I think there are two that basically no one could hate. Um, and I'm going to show them mm-hmm. to you after after this podcast is over in our post pod. Uh, so, check that out. Um and that means that all of our Patreon subscribers who come to our post-pod hangout in our Patreon Discord, which happens after every episode unless we're feeling hungry or sleepy, uh, is going to have a real treat today. That's uh, Yeah, the Pay It Forward chain is one of them. That's that's the one. That's all right, the, I got to stop watching this set. Yeah, just save, just save your mental. Um, okay, before we move on to Sunday's games, got to let you guys know again about our brand new sponsor for the show, Oakley. You get to express your style and build a look that's made for you. They're changing the game. Uh, it's time to discover a whole new world of possibilities. If you run, golf, train, uh, if you don't want to hurt your eyes as much when watching that set back, uh, they have some specific <laughs> blue light sunglasses. It won't change the content that you're viewing, unfortunately, um, but it will help your eye strain um, in general. Uh, so that's So we love that. You know, we love that for sure. You also get to look like some of your favorite athletes, like Lamar Jackson, Devo Samuel, Aaron Jones, Justin Jefferson, and Mbappe. Those are all Oakley athletes. If you want to look like them uh, and get their skill because it's all housed within the sunglasses, uh, then you need to get yourself a pair of Oakleys today. They're suited for everyday eyewear with frames and lenses allowing for an extension of self, an expression of your personality. There is much more than meets the eye. And here on this show, we're all about look good, play good and that's why oakley is the perfect partner for us uh listen up because it's officially almost summer which means you need to upgrade your sunglass game now check out oakley.com to get yourself a pair today they even offer prism lens technology what the hell is that you ask it's a proprietary technology to oakley and available for everyday settings as well if you want to know more and i know you do head on over to oakley.com and do your own research on that one uh and while you're there Get yourself a pair of everyday glasses that'll be sure to change your look for the better. When you wear Oakley, there really is more than meets the eye. Don't trust me. Try it for yourself. I've worn a lot of sunglass brands in my life, and I can assure you Oakley is not only the best looking, but the best quality out there. So head on over to Oakley.com for more information today. Big shout outs to Oakley. Um, okay, the final two matchups where the J drags up against Sticks Ferryman. Uh, for how bad the set was the day before... Um, the Jade Dragons came out and beat the Sticks Ferryman pretty, pretty handily, I would say. Yeah, I, I, I feel a little bad. I'm just gonna say it again for like the fourth <laughs> time. This was not Sino's tournament. Uh, I think every single loss in this set, just Oop. Sino was not having a good day. Yeah. Again, I feel bad just harping on Sino, but. When your jungler is having this bad of a set, it's really hard to win. Um, I don't think Aurora's like able to make too much of an impact either, unfortunately. I think Baskin played relatively well. Uh, I think Paul played relatively well. Uh, I haven't really talked about any ADCs. Kind of feel like it wasn't really an ADC-centered tournament, unless they had Hachi, which Hachi is probably just really strong right now, obviously. Um, and it kind of allows for a lot of carry potential. Um, but yeah, Sino, I'm mean, clicking through like a lot of these games and he, I remember watching these and Sino just was not able to make an impact. Like I know Fender is like, do not have a lot of damage, but it's like 31 minutes and he has 3.6 K and that's less than you want. That is, that is less than you want. Uh, yeah. I know sometimes these SPL games, you know, they're kind of slow, but it's been, I feel like jungle is pretty strong right now in comp um unless your mid laner is taking literally all of your farm and sino was just not able to do anything on the map um yeah and i feel like against a team like dragons if you're allowing their mid 3v3 to play and not pressure them at all i feel like they're gonna have a good game Mm -hmm. which i feel like this entire set outside of the game where sino was on eset game three i feel like Sino just did not play well. Again, I want to say I do feel bad for just calling out Sino like this, but I really think he just did not have a good tournament. 
No. I mean, he certainly did not have a very good tournament. Hell also did not have a good tournament. I'm noticing a lot of, I uh, think, Paul went 0-2 in the first two games of the set uh, on Hell, and then Dardes picks it and also loses that game uh, for the Dragons' only loss. So, uh, Yeah, I think those are more about there. the jungler, honestly. Than... <laughs> very possible. Uh, very, I don't know, I don't very know possible. if you had time to watch this set, but uh, it's just... Sino is just not. I watched. Up, unfortunately, I watched games one and two, uh, and he was not cooking um, in those games for sure. I did not watch game three until now, uh, where I'm. Yeah, game three had a pretty good performance on the E set, but I kind of feel like he didn't really have to do anything because this was probably like Paul's best game of the tournament. He just went diffy. Uh -huh. Like Paul just slammed everybody in this game. Well, uh, you, I will say that I'm 23 minutes into this game, and uh, Sino does have less damage. He has 4k damage in 23 minutes. Uh, that is less yeah. than Aurora on Maui. Uh, Eset, not a huge damage jungler. Um, really is just a CC bot, but still. Uh, and then also, I don't think Lass is like, I mean, he's kind of a Thor player, but I don't think he's really a Thor player. Um, no. No. But I think his team just like probably wants him to play it. So, yeah, I don't don't like Lass on the Thor personally. Uh, not a fan of that pickup for him. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hard to feel good. I think about this weekend if you are the Dragons or the Ferryman. Um, the Dragons probably come out feeling better just due to this win. Um, but yeah, because you're ending on a win, but you're beating like. Ferryman, who looked really bad, and then Gladiators, who only had, like, one good set. Yeah. Dart is saying the last is the one who wanted it, uh, the Thor, to be fair, which is which is fair. I mean, it, that if, is you're, surprising. if your jungler asks for it, you gotta give it to him. Um, but That's not the last I know. He's a different he's, man now. He's evolved. He's changed. Uh, yeah. I, the, the Ferryman and the Dragons, um, I would not be feeling great coming out of this tournament if I were either one of those teams. Uh, actually, let's let let me just cover this final set, and then we can kind of talk about who should be feeling good coming out of this set or this tournament, and who should be feeling bad. Um, sure. Kings Leviathans, uh, we did have them matching up in the match seven in our brackets, um, or at least in your bracket. Yeah, in your bracket, you had them matching up there. Mine is a mess. Who knows? Um, but you did have Kings winning this set 3-2. Uh, it did end up going to the Leviathans 3-2. I did not get a chance to watch a whole lot uh, of this set. What were what were some of your takeaways here? Uh, it was some pretty... I think game one was pretty fast-paced from Kings. And then they just could not siege at all. This... Game one was a game that should have been over in like 20 minutes, and I think it lasted until 40 minutes. Yeah, uh, which was the theme for this entire set. Mm. We have like two of the most late game. Oh, teams I did playing, watch some of this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Every game is just going long. I feel like the early games didn't really decide much for this set. At any game, it was basically just a base de defense angle for. Uh, different teams and I think Leviathans are looking a lot better um, than they were previously. I think their cohesiveness is looking pretty good. Also, I think Shinto had a really good tournament. I think Zap had a pretty good tournament. Um, Final K as well. Uh, I think he had a really good tournament. Honestly, I think kind of everyone Leviathans had a good tournament. Um, yeah, Kenneth had the big remember... quadra at the end of the set right on the... On oh, the yeah. The pop-off at the end was hilarious. It was something. Okay. Uh, it was very funny, yeah. Desso has made some of the hypest moments in SPL this season. Yep. Like, just the item itself. It just allows for crazy moments. I think I've seen, like, three Desso moments so far of just, like, plays that should never happen, and then they're allowed to happen. Right. Um, which is it, just it's just a crazy item if you get snowballing the team fight. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't remember much from this set because every game was so long that they all started to, like, blur together by the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, I think Leviathan's just overall blanket looked cleaner. Um, I think Steve was maybe the first one to bring out the Heim 
this tournament and make it look good. Um, and then, I don't know if you guys have seen Steve's tweet, but a uh, pretty funny tweet lately. I think it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of matched this tournament as well, because Steve wasn't really playing pressure, but they weren't really invading him or, like, uh, playing super aggro into his lane. Well, they know that it doesn't affect him, you know, because yeah. he doesn't need I to mean, play with pressure. He doesn't need pressure like every other ADC in the league. Right. Um, and he, he showed it, you know. That's just Steve. That's just Steve. As, as a big Steve fan, that's just Steve. That is just Steve. Uh, hold on, I have to cough up a lung. Give me a second here. All right, my lung is now uh, out. Thanks. Um, okay, overall, uh, teams that you feel should feel encouraged by how they played in this tournament. Honestly, I'm saying Leviathans and Jade. Interesting. You are saying Jade. Uh, you said they had one of the worst sets of all time. They did. It was one of the worst sets of all time. But I think for them as players, I think any win is a boost for their confidence. And I feel like they're probably in a rough spot since Stardust was in EU for so long and is now here. Mm -hmm. Where I think that any any wind in their sails is probably much appreciated. So even though I don't think their wins looked good, I think that's what that team needs. It's just a more op morale boost. I can't mm. say that word. Okay, um, let's think of it from a different a, from a. I I understand what you're saying now, and that totally makes sense to me. From the player perspective, uh, they're probably mm -hmm. feeling a little bit better. If you are uh, the Vegas odds maker on World Championship winners, uh, which teams, in your mind, from an outside looking in, uh, made it more likely? To, in your mind that they will win worlds or stay the same or you know we can leave kind of stay the same alone are there any teams that increased your confidence level that they are a world championship contender and that, are there any teams that lowered their chances in your eyes uh leviathans increased a lot and i think literally every other team went down i would agree in every way except that i think the leviathans only went up a little bit um mm -hmm. in my mind uh they did go up. It wasn't a, it wasn't much, but by not moving down, uh, they move up, um, mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, because I I expected Kings to win. I also expected Hounds to do a lot better than they did. Mm -hmm. um, Glad surprised me day one, but then kind of played the way that I expected the rest of the time. Um, Leviathans, in my opinion, had a good term at the entire time. Grand, they only faced two teams of Gladiators and Kings, but to be able to beat Kings at a tournament, in my opinion, is a very big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, Ferryman, again, Sino just did not have a good tournament. That does not instill faith in me, um, for a big moment. And then Dragons, I, I would say that they're probably staying neutral, um, just as a player perspective, if I was on that team, I'd feel better after this tournament. Um, but probably just slightly better for Dragons and then much better for Leviathans. Or, like, slightly better for Dragons or slightly worse for Dragons. Um, but Leviathans definitely increased. And I, I will... I'm just going to say everyone else went down. Because I, yeah. I expect the Kings, like, tournament time to show up and have a much better tournament. And I don't think that they had a great tournament they they beat hounds which weren't looking great and that game probably or that set probably should have gone to five but also it's kings so i feel like they should just in general be playing much better than they are um and then also leviathans i thought they were a stinker team and i feel like they're they played a pretty good tournament yeah i would agree with basically all of that um i am surprised at how much teams are still struggling, I will say. Uh, you know, I, I whether it's the new season structure or whatever it is, um, I know that there will be some salty comments uh, about, you know, it's, oh, the meta's bad and that's why teams look bad. Um, but there have been a million bad metas, uh, unbalanced, whatever you want to say. And teams still find a way to look good. You know, some teams mm -hmm. figure it out and look good. Um, I don't think any of these teams looked good.
to me. There were good moments. Um, there were good games. But I think every team made a lot of mistakes that I don't think they typically would make at this point in the season. Um, so I don't know. I'm interested to see. Like, the league is certainly more wide open than it's been in a long time, save for mm-hmm. the Warriors. Uh, but the level of play, I think, is significantly less clean than what we saw last year, the year before that. Um, all that kind of stuff. Teams yeah, I mean, last year, just, I think it was just pay God, like, running over everybody with yeah. assassin mids, and they literally just looked unbeatable. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Just just an interesting little, like, thing that I've been thinking about um, mm-hmm. is that these teams haven't gotten it nailed down quite yet, and they've got a lot more to work on uh, with the next season coming out uh, next week. Um, patch notes for that are tomorrow as of recording this podcast, uh, and hopefully I am less sick and can actually be on those patch notes. Dude, I was sick for the season one patch notes show and couldn't be on it. I felt so bad because it was, like, so much. You know, it was 10.1. Like, that's a long show. Like, I wanted to be there to help out. Couldn't mm-hmm. be there. Now I'm worried I'm going to be sick and unable to help out for this one and there is also a lot there's a there's a ton to go over um guess who hasn't been sick in a long time it's me why would you i was gonna let you not say it so that you didn't jinx it oh your tournament's coming up like not that long from now why would you tempt yeah yeah get to knocking uh that's for sure (laughs) all right time for our random question of the week brought to you by our lovely patrons uh, head on over to patreon.com slash backliners if you want to join our community discord um and be able to submit your random questions of the week hang out on our post pod see exclusive hamlet pictures all that kind of good stuff um timmy asks did you have anything near your hometown that was cool for tourists but was just normal for you that's a good question uh wait timmy had a question too above that uh oh you're right good call I, Timmy also had the last question last week. Timmy is, as always, popping in some good questions. Let's, let's answer this one, and then we'll go back to okay. uh, Timmy's We can speed run it. Yeah. Uh, anything to your hometown that was cool for tourists, but just normal for you? Uh, no. I kind of just lived in, like, a little country town in Georgia, which... I mean, we had, like, a downtown area, which might be the only... Um, Actually, I think we had, like, Indian Mounds or something. Hmm. Which was, like, a park that you could walk through. Um, it was, like, a historic site or something. Um, but I remember that. I, I don't know if that's, like, big or, like, something that people would, like, drive out of state to visit. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Permanis is definitely a Pittsburgh tourism thing that, you know, just having fries on a sandwich is just, like, normal. Pittsburghers put fries on everything. Um, most salad, yeah. like if you get a steak salad in Pittsburgh, it's coming with fries on it. Uh, and I didn't know that was weird until like I went to college, basically. Um, oh yeah, Gravity Hill in North Park. Uh, Angelic Ninja is from my exact area. Holy cow! Um, yeah, that that was de- there was a, there's a park. Uh, in near where i grew up called north park and there's a street uh there's like a road there where it looks visually it looks like it's say sloping left to right but if you were to put like a ball or a water bottle or something like that it would roll right to left and it was just like an optical illusion type of thing which was very cool um incline is another great one bleps yeah the incline is just like a, it's an incline like it's a big tourist thing uh i've ridden it a couple times doesn't excite me um i don't know the other one this is going to be sacrilege to all of my all the pittsburgh listeners out there uh everyone who comes in from out of town everyone's like oh you got to go to this one breakfast diner i'm gonna get absolutely roasted for this um and i'm just not that excited it's called pamela's uh and it's good it's really good it isn't a must do if you come to pittsburgh in my opinion but maybe you know i'm spoiled because i grew up with it but it's good anyways um timmy also asked do you remember any posters from a teacher's walls did it say something or just a picture a poster on a teacher's wall don't really remember anything 
Um, I don't either. I don't think my memory serves me that good, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Particularly yeah. from, like, school age, like... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. My memory of that time in my life is not very good. Um, mm -hmm. Same. Unfortunately, I don't know. It's all been deleted, I think. Yep. Overwritten. It's fair. Uh, I do hate eggs, which might be why I think Pamela's uh, is not a necessary stop on your Pittsburgh trip. Uh, sea Fog asks, what's the best kind of muffin? This one's easy. It's blueberry. It isn't close. Uh... That is a good one, um, but I think if I'm craving it, I have two. Uh, Dusty made a banana chocolate chip, which was insanely good, and then also a lemon poppy seed. Mm. The, nothing beats a lemon poppy seed muffin if I'm craving it. It is That sounds, unreal. I've never had one, and it does not sound appealing to me at all. Do you like lemon? Um, I like lemonade. I don't usually go for, like, if there's, like, a lemon, uh, like, a fish served in, like, a lemon sauce of some kind. You know, it's a very common, like, pairing in restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, I never go for that because I think it is very easy to end up with too much lemon. Uh, and it will very quickly mm -hmm. ruin the dish. Um, I also don't put lemon in my water. Something I did pick up from my, when I visited Italy, though, is they put, le like, a slice of lemon uh, with their Coca-Cola um, and that is very good. I'm a big fan of that. But overall, like, I would say, like, I'm cool with lemons, uh, but we are best friends. I would, I would say try them. Give them a little college try. Okay, I'll give it the old college try. Uh, Day asks, waffles, pancakes, or French toast? I feel like we've been asked this before, but mm. I don't remember my what or my answer is then so i'm just gonna do a gut reaction of what i want to eat right now which is pancakes wow that is actually the last of the three by a significant margin if you ask me it's waffles then french toast then pancakes and a dark horse contender for number one is french toast sticks uh i'm nine years old in my brain and french toast sticks to this day just They're go really good unreasonably hard um, man, I hope we have some French toast sticks in the freezer because I will go downstairs and make them right now. God, those things. Dip those things in some syrup. Bam! Yeah, I think mine is probably French toast and pancakes and waffles if I was to make a tier list. But right now, I don't That's crazy. Pancakes. That's crazy that you have pancakes over waffles, like, consistently. Yeah, I, I'm just a pancake lover. I don't really go for waffles a lot. Um, it's... Like, I'll take pancakes over waffles. I just don't want to make the waffles. Um, if I'm going to, like, a breakfast place, I think the waffles will be good. Mm -hmm. But I think I would still prefer to have a pancake. I had an egg waffle for breakfast this morning, and I was stoked. Um, and, yeah, bre like, actual waffles that aren't eggos, that, also stoked. That being said, any one of these can be number one if you're craving it. Mm, that is true i have had moments where i like i specifically want a pancake and not a waffle and pancakes are good mm -hmm. um but waffles are higher on my tier list for sure do you do you put a lot of syrup on your pancakes uh i do yeah butter i do not butter and syrup but i yeah, don't but... put a ton of syrup on my waffles all the time specifically egos a lot of i'd say the vast majority of time i eat egos it's in the toaster oven pops out put like a little bit of butter on it and then i just like eat it like that uh mm. yeah, a little bit of butter it should still be like kind of cold if it's kind yeah. of cold and slightly melted that is perfect yeah. i feel like that's the one thing we're me and you are very passionate about is the butter yep like, you got butter a butter right. dude i went i had a waffle at eaton park when we went back to pittsburgh uh, my pits mm -hmm. the pittsburgh listeners uh, my pittsburgh peeps will know what i'm talking about bro they gave me so much butter that it ruined my waffle. I couldn't even get That's rid true. of all because you know, like you try and like take it off the waffle, mm -hmm. but it's already like seeped in a little bit, and then it's on your knife, and you can't really get rid of it, and like it, it was so I like buttery. I was like, "Am I like Paula Dean? Like, what is going on? Like, arteries clogging as you're looking at my it. God, the the pad of butter was like half the size of the waffle, and the waffle was huge." Wait, do kids nowadays even know who Paula Deen is? Probably not. No, that's definitely that's an old person reference. Yeah. 
They need to have, uh, there needs to be a, a Food Network celebrity chef for all generations that is just like the butter person. Like, I feel like that's a mantle that should be held. Also, for the next question, I feel like also too much syrup can ruin any of these. Yes. I am a very limited syrup person, same with butter on things. And the the flavor of whatever you're eating should still shine through through the syrup. It shouldn't have enough syrup to where it's like half and half or anything over that. It should be like a nice sweetness, but mm -hmm. <laughs> mainly the main thing of what you're eating. Can I also say, I know this is also a terrible take that my nine-year-old taste buds have. Um, when I see something like real maple sugar syrup, like real maple mm -hmm. syrup, I don't want that. Like, that's not the type of syrup that I, it, it, that's not the flavor that I want. I'm conditioned to want, like, mm -hmm. Aunt Jemima fake syrup. I love the taste real? of that. What do you mean? She's not real. Well, I know, but, like, the, like, the the maple like maple syrup like it, it, you're talking like the it it's served in like the jugs you know what i mean mm -hmm. like a cracker barrel or something like that i don't want that syrup i want the syrup that, that, that i get at sheets when i order french toast sticks where it's just like a little peel thing and i peel it off and i get to dip my french toast sticks in there like that's what i want um that is good both are good syrups i like both yeah, not a big maple syrup guy. Uh, okay, last but not least, it's Hiru. Uh, my morbid curiosity has gotten the best of me here, but I suppose this is like a question mostly for aggro. I'm so sorry, Bera. Yeah, if you're okay. able to disclose it, what is some of your favorite content you've heard from your fellow co-workers or pro players during smaller segments like Smital, uh or single questions that had to be cut? Hmm, that had to be cut. <sighs> We really didn't have to cut that much. Uh, there were some interviews from like when I was doing the Roster Apocalypse doc, uh, the Roster Apocalypse video, um, that you know we ended up, you know, it when you're in the when you're in the middle of an interview, uh, and you're kind of in the zone, you're talking about stuff. And then sometimes players realize, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, or, like... I did that. You did do that, I remember. Um, and... I always vastly prefer that they have that realization afterwards. Not because it, I want to, like, exploit them or, like, use it or anything like that, but because it, inter it just puts them on edge for the rest of the interview. If they have that realization afterwards, uh, it never bothers me at all. Um, and... Um, I think, uh, I think, I don't think that he would mind because we ended up using it anyways. There was one, um, if you watch that roster apocalypse doc, there was one clip, uh, that we used. I think, I think it was actually the same situation. Maybe it was different for you than for zap, but zap afterwards kind of had that moment of like, oh, there was some stuff in there that like, I don't really want to get to get used. Like, can you cut it? Um, or can you not use that? And my answer was always, yes, we can cut it, um, but we aren't going to use it just to use it. And we would never like show those videos to all the players ahead of time and get approval. Um, but there were plenty of instances uh, in the roster apocalypse doc was one of them where some players, you know, were a little worried about what they were saying, how they came across, whatever it may be. Didn't want. It's very easy for those things to be taken out of context. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I would always ask is, if we want to use it, let us put it in uh, a rough cut, and then I will send you, you know, the few the relevant bits before and the relevant bits after, and you can hear how it sounds and how we want to use it. And if you still want us to cut it, we will cut it. Uh, but let us at least try to put it in context if we think it's worth, if it's valuable. Um, and there were times where those things didn't, you know, we would send those and the players would say, yeah, I, you know, I just don't want to have that in there and we would cut it and figure out a way around it. Um, but I would say the majority of the time we would end up getting the green light in the end. Um, 
Uh, did we did did we do that for you, Barrett? Because I do remember you having like some concerns with uh, with that interview. I don't remember if we had to send you a cut ahead of time. Uh, but... no, it, it didn't get used. Oh, okay. Nice. What I, I was worried about didn't get used, so I was thinking. Nice. Um, so yeah, that like, and that's just kind of how it goes. Um, yeah, because when you're yeah. doing that interview from the other side, um, you kind of get caught up in like giving the full details and kind of also sometimes the full details are slightly tainted by your emotional feelings of the situation for sure so like in the moment when you're getting asked the questions you're like saying it honestly or like as honestly as you think you can mm -hmm. then afterwards you're like oh no what have i done <laughs> what, have, what have i said <laughs> yeah i mean it's so like my wife was watching some true crime documentary that i was watching a little bit of mm -hmm. yesterday uh and i just feel like it is so easy to tell when the subjects are either being completely led uh in their interviews with the with the tv show producers or um oh yeah they're so cheesy yeah like it, i just feel like you can really tell when things are inauthentic um mm -hmm. yep. or if the su like in this particular one, the guy I thought was just like so obviously acting and you know going over the top and all that kind of stuff, and it was like literally making me cringe. Um, but you really like it is a difficult thing to get players or really any subject to um, relax to the point where they can make that type of mistake. Uh, you know, in their minds, they would view it as a mistake um in an interview and i think it is really important to not immediately be like nope you said it we got gotcha. you like w if you want if you're trying to come in make one thing and leave uh you could do that but you're gonna burn a lot of bridges and that and that like gets around um i felt like it was i i took it very seriously to where like there were there were definitely some times where like other people who were involved with the with the process would be like nah you know let's use it like they it won't be that big of a deal um and they were probably right um but i was like look if we want to and you know i'm not walter freaking cronkite like i'm not trying to <laughs> say like i was i was doing this incredibly noble thing but like it is just important to um, if you want to, if you want that openness, uh, and that kind of stuff to continue, then you have to take those requests really seriously. And I think that the team's willingness to do that, uh, is what has led like watch content from like season four or five to season 10. Um, and just like the level of comfort and openness that the players have, uh, mm -hmm. is, night and day and not it's not even that they've been around for that long it's like new players coming into the scene are more open and comfortable um and i think that 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 stuff like that is uh, a big reason why i realize now that i've rambled completely over what the initial question was and didn't really answer <laughs> it um but yeah there there was, isn't really a whole lot uh gormizer had a game show idea that we shot a pilot of um that we thought was really cool and funny uh that ended up getting cut um and that's like the only other one i can think of that's pretty much it nice yeah there you go and also unlucky and also unlucky um all right that's gonna do it for us this week uh thanks everyone for watching class this year we'll be back next week with patch notes talk we're gonna have a oh, lot to boy. talk about it's gonna be fun and something um bring a drink bring some popcorn and uh be yeah, relaxed, buckle up. Possible. Buckle up. It'll be great. Um, I'm going to not say the thing I wanted to say there because I'm getting better about it. Uh, anyways, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Uh, Oakley.com, they're, they're our sponsor for today. Shout out to Oakley. Patreon.com slash backliners if you want to support the show directly. Uh, that's another way to do it. And until then, we'll see you next week. Barra, you know what to do. Bye. Clean, clean. A little too excited, but still sounded good. No, it was good. it was the right amount of excitement. I'll take it. I'll you take were excited. It. That's nothing wrong with that. Thank you. Totally oh, apologize. I was excited. I was excited. Thank you.